Here we are. I got one. All right, excellent. Well, okay, thank you guys, both of you, for coming. Uh -huh. Especially, you know, if you know, it was uh, quite a turn to get up here. <laughs> if uh, there are cookies, and you should sign in so you get credit. All right, this is really simple. Uh, if you have your cell phone, please take it out. I'm going to have you do what the students do um, each day. So I hope that I did not reset this from yesterday when I did this. Take your phone out, please, and follow these simple steps. I will participate as well. You just open up the internet, go to Socrative. Log in. No, not at all. It'll actually uh, all it'll give you all captured. Oh. Are you guys um, on there yet? I'm going to change something. Okay. So do we answer the question already? Yes, I'll tell you what. Uh, it, do me a favor. What, are the, what is the question showing you? Uh, oh, now it just changed. Okay, yeah, it changed. I just changed it. I had it from my kids uh, this morning. I oh, uh, launched. So it should. About the Red Hawk Way? Okay. Yeah. That's we, what we, we want. We should be looking at the Red Hawk Way one. Uh, yep. Okay, great. Oh. So you create these events? Yes, and it takes about a minute to do this. Oh, okay. It's super duper simple. Right. And you can come back and go look at all the results, etc. So you got three questions. The first one was a multiple choice. The second one's true or false. Mr. Volker, are you too young to know who's Bob Newhart? I know the name, but I don't know the face. So. Okay. I do. The answer's true. I do look like Bob Newhart. And then the last one, uh, you, you know, you can see that it's uh, the kind of question that you can leave open-ended. So there's three different types that you can put in. Multiple choice, true, false, and then um, open-ended questions like this. So, where is it at? Here? Yes. Okay. So, let's see. Everybody has answered all three questions, correct? I could find that out without even asking. <laughs> Fuchs, did you answer the question? I did. I said polling scholars question mark because I'm not sure if it has a polling option. Awesome. Okay. okay, so um, just like for the multiple choice one, right now I can go, you know, on the teacher version, and you can see either this form where it shows you question by question and it gives you a percentage. So 100% of us got this right. Um, the cool thing about this is, it's like I use it for exits, and that's all. I, that's all I use it for at the end of the lesson, just to do like quick checks. But you can do like, if you 
as the teacher, you can have the, you know a couple multiple choice or true false or whatever, and see how like right here. I mean, it gives you visual, easy evidence. Now, if somebody got one wrong, it's red. The good thing about this is at the end of each class, you look at it and you say, everybody got one right, you know, but a third of the kids missed number two. So then I know, okay, that's problem with number two. I need to go over that tomorrow. That's really the only way I've been using this. But it's like, and then when you go to open into one, um, if you look up at the screen, you can click right here, and then you see what the kids, you know, uh, how they responded. And it's like the one that you all first started with. It said list one benefit of the transcontinental railroad, and then the next question was list one harm or whatever. Um, you can kind of get a sense, just a real quick snapshot. Did they get this or not? And it's very simple, it's very easy, it's free. It takes about a minute and a half to set up. So that's what I've been using it for, is just exits to sort of inform um, my decision-making going forward on how well they got what it is that I wanted them to get that given day. Here is what I would like us to do now. Start over. So go out and like type socrative.com in, start over. And we're gonna go to the create account thing for you. And this is all, the, the, the version we're using here is free. It's super easy to use, it's cheap, because it doesn't cost a thing. And once you get logged in, you know, I just, it saves your uh, password. You don't even have to do that. So it's all right there. So yeah, go to the create account tab, and then you'll type in uh, your name, your email, and a password. Mr. Vicky, can I interest you in a cookie? Did it give you a class code? Yeah, Volker 5391. Okay, so that's who you are. Forever? Yeah, um, for, for our purposes. Now, if you were to upgrade into like, the whatever, you know, the one you pay for, you can take different classes. One of the downsides of this is you can only have one class. Okay. You know, so all your classes are sort of lumped in one. Okay. You know, you can clear out quiz after a class and then, you know, start over so you can see that for each one. Mr. Grant gave us an interesting tip. He said you can just create the same quiz and name it, you know, like so native removal one and then native removal the exact same quiz, two, you know, and then like the kids from different yeah, that would be one way to group it. But then you have to go through and launch it again. But either way, when we get through this, I think that'll make a little bit more sense. So once you've uh, let Mr. Cooper finish up here. For the uh -oh. Okay, it'll 
tell you whatever your code, your class code. And so, there you are. All right, right. So in the same spot now. Um, if you go to like the main the main page, the main menu or whatever, do you all see this? Yeah. Okay. What we want to do, and, and this corresponds directly with the little um, piece of paper that we've got. So we are going to go to quizzes. Quizzes at the top in blue. You can see where it says quizzes uh, right here. See that? At the top, quizzes. Different on our page. Okay. But yeah, I found quizzes. You found quizzes. Oh, probably on the menu. Yeah. Right. And then your alls obviously are going to be blank. Um. When you get there, can you do you see where it says add quiz? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So click add quiz, and then it'll say create new. Now, where it says import, that's if you're, if you're teaching the same subject as somebody else, it creates a code name for each quiz, so you can just type the code name in and import somebody else's. Uh, or, you know, you can just create new every time, which is what I've been doing. So you create new, click, then you got to name it. So just do type in sample. Add quiz. Where it says untitled quiz at the top, just type in sample. And then um, once you do that, you go through, you're going to create your own little quiz. Now, what you all saw when you did mine, there's different types. So you see how it's, um, where it says questions, scroll down a little bit. It's easier for the teacher side to do this on an actual computer than it is the phone. For the kids, you know, it's home work pressure. So there's three different types of questions. You click on, you know, multiple choice. Um, and you know you type in your question, whatever, and then if, if you go down, it'll offer you A, B, C, D, E. You can take E off by hitting it with the X. And all you gotta do is just check your, you know, whatever the correct answer is, and boom, bam, it's that. So you write the question in here. Yeah, those are your stem. And let's just say, you know, you only want to have A, B, C. You hit the X before G, E, and those drop off. So they've only got three. Is this is this uh what what's this aligned with the standard? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, this is like the rudimentary version of soccer. Okay. I don't really know a whole lot about the other elements because I've only used it explicitly for those exits. And um, I haven't even actually messed around with it too much. I looked at the space race version. That's something else uh, that could be potentially pretty cool. But all right, so take a gander back up at the screen. Uh, this is the important part. So, you know, that was your sample quiz. I just, you know, you don't have to launch it or anything. I just kind of wanted you to see it, the functionality of it. If you look up here, this is the most important part. Once you've created your quiz and it's on there, you'll hit save or whatever, it's on there. In order to make it work, and I just did this at the beginning of class because you all were still operating on an old quiz and I had to relaunch this quiz. See up there at the top or uh, I guess on your phones, again, the functionality is different on the phone. You'll probably be doing this on your computer. Mm -hmm. But um, do you all see where it says launch? If you go to the main menu. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the launch is the crucial part because this is how you put it out there into the universe. You click the launch, and then you're going to choose your quiz um, that you've created. Now, you all didn't actually create one, but you see up here I have several. I've got a whole bunch of them up here, right? I would pick... Like I just did, I picked the one that says practice for Socrative. And then, you know, you hit the next button. It gives you an option of how you want the kids to see the feedback. As in, when you all got it right on your first question, when you took your quiz and you got it right, it tells you you're right. Correct? Yeah. I, and that's because I set this up to do that. So, you know, you get instant feedback. So you just, you launch it, you choose the quiz. Um, you pick how you want the feedback to come out, and then it's out there. I click launch. Okay. And then you click what? Now? Well, for you, uh, you all, you know, you didn't have a quiz saved. That's why it wouldn't. I, I didn't save one. Oh, you did? But the one I made. Did. Okay. So you're going to go to launch. And, and this is what popped up right there. Okay. So you go to launch. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Oh, so then, yeah, you got a two flip and you get your sample. Oh. And that, and so, like I said, I don't want to do that. And then it's out there. So you see how that's like pulled up? As we take, if we launch, if we got on to it, it's like you know, seven or six inches, it would pop it up. <laughs> and so, those quizzes are on there. You can always go back and look at the results. You can only do 10 questions. And like I said, each class, you can't differentiate your classes unless you create the same quiz over and over and like title it something a little different. Um, but for me, it's just for like quick snapshot feedback to where I can look at the graph and say, oh, you know, half the people missed number two. And that's what I, that's what I mean. That's it. That's all, that's all I got for you. What do you think? It sounds good. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, give it a whirl. Think, mess around with it a little bit yourself. The good thing is you don't have to log in, so the kids don't have to remember anything. Every time, all they got to do is type in that code, you know. And I have like the what you all started with, those simple step-by-step -step instructions. I just copy and paste that every day on my PowerPoint. It's all because the, the code doesn't change. And all they got to do is make sure they put their name in, and then you can get feedback right there. Okay. Can you download the results? Yeah, you can do that. It's got graphs and all sorts of stuff, and it's, it's free. Now, there is a, an upgrade version that costs 50 bucks or something for the year, um, and that's got all sorts of other things. But this, you know, I'm a cheap state, and uh, I'm a public, public servant, you know. <laughs> We're working on the budget we've got. But yeah, um, I just, like I said, I've been using it for exits. You can use it for openings as well. And it's just simple, cheap, easy. Kids get their phones out for a second. Satisfied that they like. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, there you go. Yeah, Boom. The, the, I will email you all this presentation and the handout just so you have and it digitally. Okay. And that's, 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 that's it. it.